Well, it's so good to see you. I thank you for letting us come into your home or wherever you are watching this. This is Thanksgiving. I'm sure I didn't have to tell you that because you've probably been in the grocery store for a couple of hours. Well, I'm grateful today to be on the set here with Alton Dixon, my partner in this ministry, and my other brother, partner, Ray Love. Yes. Ray and I have done television together for many, many years. Wow. But I think this may be the first time we've ever sat down like this. All right. So Ray Love on your far right, and as usual, Alton in the middle. <laughs> So we're going to talk about Thanksgiving today. What are your favorite Thanksgiving memories, Ray? Let's start with you. Wow. Well, thank you for uh, letting me <laughs> start this off. Uh, I, I'd, I'd have to think about that uh, for a while. Uh, one that uh, that comes to mind, and I don't know if it would be my favorite Thanksgiving memory, but one that uh, stands out in my mind anyhow. Uh, when I was in high school, I played in a high school band, and on Thanksgiving Day, the uh, two teams from uh, our county played in a bowl game called the Turkey Bowl. It sounds like a joke, but that's really <laughs> what it was. And uh, my parents, worked most of the time, so on Thanksgiving, they'd get out and rake the lawn, rake up the leaves. And so I got busy doing that and realized that I'm supposed to be at, at the <laughs> Turkey Bowl. My, our team was playing, and uh, so I, I get to the Turkey Bowl, and everything's going fine. You know, I wasn't sure it could function without me, but it, it <laughs> went on anyhow. But uh, that's one that stands out in my mind. And uh, when I talk about uh, my high school years and events like that, I'm thankful that God brought music into my life. Yeah. Uh, it revolutionized my life in many ways. And uh, I was thinking last night about some of my friends from high school and got a little nostalgic Wow. Uh, unfortunately, some of them have passed away, right. but uh, I'm thankful for friends and acquaintances that have stayed close, and uh, and a lot of those relationships were made through music. Yeah. So uh, it was a great part of my life. Wow. Thank you for that, wow. Alton. You had time to think. Yeah. What's yeah. your favorite, or I'm, one of your favorites? Uh, one of my favorite memories being. Uh, kid maybe 12 13 and just remembering that at thanksgiving time i was going to get to watch football see my family and uh and, and the family was going to pray together and so uh when i was a kid that that was really big for me because uh i knew that my whole family would be together and we, we would always get into a circle and, and we were able to uh say uh what we were thankful for so we were always uh i mean from the from the littlest kid uh, to the oldest adult had to say what they was thankful for and so um, uh, that was a, a very fine memory of mine that um, on Thanksgiving Day I knew that that would happen um, and so uh, Thanksgiving is something that's that's real near and dead to my heart just from the mere fact yeah I'm a, I love family mm -hmm. right so uh, when you think about Thanksgiving you can't help but think about family uh, and just being thankful to God for family oh yeah, yeah that's that's family time yes my favorite Thanksgiving memory is not really Thanksgiving. It's kind of anti Thanksgiving. We had all the family back in the 80s at our house in Dallas. My mother in law lived with me. My sister in law lived with me. My nephew lived with us. So we had a house full of people. And we had a few other relatives who came in for that day. And so, like you often do, you go around the table, what are you thankful for? And everybody says what they're thankful for. And it's always kind of sweet and nostalgic and maybe teary a little bit. And we got to my youngest child. And I said, Jessica, what are you thankful for? And she thought, I'm thankful for my dog. <laughs> and I could not stop me. I said, that's it <laughs> and everybody erupted in laughter and from then till now i'm the butt of that joke <laughs> that's it <laughs> i couldn't believe that was the only thing she could come up with <laughs> but that's all right well I, I want you to think about this 
I'm going to tell you a quote, and you can tell me if you think you know what it is. I counted my blessings, and it turned my life around. Mm -hmm. Willie Nelson. Wow. Wow. Do you believe that? Mm. He's had more trouble than blessings, I think, in his life. Wow. But that, that's a great quote. Uh, it occurred to me one time to be, be thankful for my toothbrush. Mm. I don't know why I thought about my toothbrush. <laughs> but I got to thinking, you know, if I didn't have that toothbrush, I'd be in trouble. Yeah. And so the little things that, that come up, what y'all have any little thankful things? <laughs> Yeah, well, for me, uh, I was I was at the dentist last week. I think you brought up toothbrush, and uh, uh, I, I told this uh, story uh, Sunday at church in my sermon. Uh, I said that I, I was I was in the chair, and I was having a cleaning done, the procedure done, and it had something in my mouth, and it, it made it to where it had to keep my mouth open. So they put. Um, some kind of contraption in my mouth and, and it made my mouth stay open and so when my mouth started getting tired I took it out right and the, and the dentist said no you can't take it out we need that to keep your mouth open I said well my mouth getting tired and the dentist <laughs> said something that, that blessed me he said my job is to do the work your job is to keep your mouth open <laughs> <laughs> and what we have to realize as Christians is God's job to do the work but it's our job to keep our mouth yeah. open and keep thanking him right keep blessing him keep keep saying God thank you for giving us these blessings you're doing the work but I'm gonna keep my mouth open amen yeah that's good yeah I like that you got any little things right <laughs> well uh, relationships uh, I guess as I get older, I realize that uh, people in my life are so important. And people don't realize it, but some, there are certain people who, you, you, you made reference to somebody uh, before we started taping today, uh, who uses a telephone to keep touch with people. And uh, people come up to me after church and and make nice comments about something that was sung and uh, it really blesses me that God's given me an opportunity to to help encourage people mm -hmm. and uh, and just those they may be insignificant to them but to me they're very significant because they remind me of all the things I do have to be thankful for Absolutely. Encouraging words are really special. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yes. I don't know if I made it really clear that Ray is our minister of music here at the First Baptist Church in <laughs> Lancaster, Texas. But he and I have worked together in three other churches. So from 1972, when we first met, intermittently we were not together, but m many of those years we were serving on the same staff. Wow. I give Ray my sermon topics ahead of time. And I'm always amazed at how he picks the perfect music. This past Sunday was a, a wonderful case in point. The topic was prepare to meet God, preparing to meet God. And he chose behold the lamb. Hmm. It was perfect. It, but it didn't hit me how perfect it was until after church. Oh, yeah. That was the perfect song for that message. Well, as I was uh, thinking about uh, what the choir should sing, it dawned on me that when we get to heaven, or whatever, however it happens, whatever goes on, I believe Jesus is the one we're going to see there. And I've, you have uh, something that you ask folks from time to time. If you were to stand before God and he said, why should I let you into my heaven? Mm. You say it's because yeah. of Jesus. Yeah, right. And at some point, when I really probably should be condemned for a lot of my actions and attitudes, Jesus is going to stand there and say, he's forgiven. That's good. Yeah. He's Trust forgiven. Me. Yeah. That's yeah. good. That's real good. I'll tell you, I just established the relationship with Ray, but I'm grateful that the Lord let my path cross with this guy's <laughs> I really am high on, on Alton. I think he's going to be one man. of the yeah. most important Thank pastors you, in Thank Dallas you. or Texas or anywhere Thank you so uh, when he hits his top speed. Thank mm -hmm. you. I appreciate How's it. How's your church doing? Doing good. Doing good. Uh, we were thankful right now just for uh, even being able to have 
uh, somewhere to temporarily worship. Thank you all, First Baptist. We can't say enough how it feels for you. Well, God was in that, was wasn't he? Yeah, he was in we that. We sat down to lunch together. He, he said, you know where I can get? Yeah, get a place to meet. Right. We just had an opening, right? And there, and there, and there was something that uh, another reason to be thankful, right? And so uh, we're just so thankful for that and, and being able to be here. But you know, it's amazing when you say uh, that that Minister Ray Love. I call you Minister since you Minister Music. Uh, Ray Love has been with you all this time. I think that's something that's ironic and both uh, something to be thankful for within yes, itself. Yes, absolutely. I mean, think about. When you talk about ministry, um, I would go on the record to say it's hard to find people that you can say over the past 30, 40 years you have been in ministry with. Yeah. Most yeah. times, you know, you in ministry with somebody, you fall out. Most times, you move, right? And so to have you all uh, intermittently mm -hmm. be in ministry over that time, I think that's that's awesome within itself, right? And so I could bet you all have a book within Y'all need to write for <laughs> together. <laughs> but all the ministry stuff that probably could help so many ministries. We wouldn't want to write everything in there. But <laughs> you know, when some great when I first met Alton, I thought he and Mona had been married for 10 or 15 years. <laughs> How long? Two years. Two oh, years. Oh, wow. <laughs> they still knew he was. Yeah, still knew he was. Yeah. We had the privilege of having, and something I'm very grateful for, the Photo Sisters uh, out of uh, Nashville and Baton Rouge. Wow. And they're going to come again uh, this December the 6th. And uh, we had a chance when they were here last year to do a little taping, just like this, talking to them. Wow. And we're going to show that in just a few minutes because these three sisters are the most amazing singers and musicians mm -hmm. in both a classical and, and more secular sense. Wow. And uh, we're going to have a chance for you to meet them right now with an interview we did last year. I am so excited to bring this next interview to you. It's not often that this Baptist preacher gets to see three angels in the flesh. <laughs> but these are the photo sisters on our program today. And I want to tell you how excited I am to have them here in front of me. And they're just coming off the road. They didn't have time to put on their long dresses. And they were very kind to let me interview them. Oh, not your all, almost. <laughs> so I just want to talk to you all a little bit. Uh, the first question I have is, okay. I know you've answered this a thousand times. Bring it How up. did you get started? Who decided, let's do this. Yeah. Let's go on the road and stay on the road all the time. Well, that, that point point God decided this. Yeah. Yeah. Point blank God answers. We never decided to do that. God literally yeah. put it in our laps. Okay. And we've just been doing it. Oh, that's since. so beautiful. Mom and dad, so we were home educated. Yeah. And so mom and dad thought, well, you know, part of their curriculum should be music, should be soccer, should be ballet, you know, yeah. whatever. Soccer and ballet just went downhill after a few Quit. weeks. <laughs> and it was one of those things where music just kept going. And we had so many role models in our life, too. Our pastor's family at that time, they did music. And mm -hmm. so, you know, one of their daughters broke their leg, one daughter had braces, one daughter had glasses, and so we wanted all the above. And yeah. so one started playing violin, and we wanted to play violin too. And, um, it was, yeah. And then it turned into nursing homes, we played a lot of yeah. nursing homes, and then senior citizens church events, and then churches, and then, is what it is? Yeah, so it's so never, long, we never planned it. Long story yeah. short, it really has been the Lord that just has opened and closed so many doors that we didn't seek out. It just kind of happened. I was talking to your dad on the phone one day, not a month or so ago, and I said, How, you must be the busiest man in town. How in the world <laughs> can you handle what all? Because I watched him do it at East Texas Baptist. Oh, right, right. Oh, okay. And he said, yeah. when you love what you're doing and when you yeah. feel like God is in it, it's mm -hmm. not hard. That's the key. Yeah. When you right. feel like God is in it and he's called you to mm -hmm. it, you do it. Just that one sentence explains you all to me. Mm -hmm. You're raised by people like that. And I know your mom feels the same way. Mm -hmm. yes, so how do you handle the hassle of travel? Ooh. I bring my coffee and dumbbells with me everywhere I go. <laughs> dumbbells like this? Yeah. Or is that a, sort of a donut? I don't yeah, know. No, I know. <laughs> she literally does bring her weights. And, to work um, out. And coffee maker. Yeah. Yeah. Coffee, maker. No. coffee makers. Seriously, though, I feel like family is what mm -hmm. makes I mean, if yeah. I couldn't travel, if I didn't travel without mm -hmm. them, I don't know what I would mm -hmm. do. I can't imagine traveling by myself because it is a lonelier life. You mm -hmm. meet a lot of people, but yeah. you don't get to know. A you lot really lean people. on each other. Oh, okay. you yeah. lean on yeah. each other. And so that for me, that's. That's key. Mm -hmm. I have two daughters, and they fought most of the time. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you all seem to get along wonderfully well. We do. Yeah. 
I mean, we, we have our discipline. Except for maybe getting out the door this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> you know, by far, we would say we're each other's best friends. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think the older we get, the more our personalities actually change in a way. I think our individuality is coming out more the older we get, but at the same time, I think the closer we get. Mm -hmm. Because of all the experiences and even just traveling together, mm -hmm. like she said, we really lean on each other. We go home or we visit places and sometimes we feel like um, we've been left behind in a way yeah. from, you know, when you go back yeah, home, home, what's going on at home. And so we just really, I think, so then we just, we just like even get together even, even closer more. during yeah. those times because we so have each other. You started in Baton Rouge and now you have a home in Nashville. So you mm -hmm. really have two bases now. We're living, right. yeah, we're living between two places. Right okay. Now. Uh -huh. What is the farthest you've ever been from those, that base? Have you been um, overseas yet? Have you been in Canada? Well, we've been to not Mexico, but Mexico. That's not yeah. overseas. Not really. So. It's a ways, though. We've never been overseas. Mm -hmm. But I would say the farthest we've probably been is California. Okay. Yeah. Colorado. Have you been to New York or you've been to Chicago? No. Been to LA? Chicago, but not New York. Okay. Right? okay. LA, not to perform. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball either, but if, if, if you don't, become, you know, all of the country, it's going to be the country's loss. Because <laughs> you all are very special. So uh, this is kind of a strange question. Mm -hmm. Have you, in your performances at different places, mostly always in churches, but not always, mm -hmm. have you had any significant spiritual things happen in the audience? Have people come and told you, you know, you, you, you helped me see Christ better than I'd ever seen him before? Anything like mm -hmm. that? happened to you? A lot. A lot of that, oh, of that last, can you tell me a couple of them? Yeah, I'd love to hear it. It's hard to recall oh, details. I think one of my favorite has been, it was actually outside of the church. It was for the Louisiana Clerks of Court. Mm -hmm. And so it was not a Christian event. And so they had asked us to put in maybe a little bit more pop music if we could. But then the director was like, just go ahead and play all your sacred music. <laughs> so mm -hmm. we, we did. And um, they said, you know, they're everyone from every different political background coming to this and so we were we were a little nervous like okay how is it all going to be handled and we started out though with the song that we normally do how great thou art mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and at the end of that one the very first song every, it was just such a testimony of the unity that god can bring everyone was on their feet to worship were they really just to have great thou art. Yeah. democrat republican alike it was really <laughs> and that happened that happened throughout the whole thing movie. and there was even one person <laughs> afterward that said we haven't felt unity like this in our meetings in a okay. long time right. and she's like that's what the lord can do he can bring unity from every different yeah. background well the fact that you all come from that deep commitment to christ comes through in your music mm. and I've, I've shared with galen up the I really like classical music, and mm -hmm. so your classical approach to the gospel music was just the perfect combination for me. Aww. And uh, uh, you all, I can't imagine, how many hours do you practice each week? Or have you it gotten varies. to the point it where... It really varies. Mm -hmm. I mean, leading yeah. up to this time of year, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but it was hard to say how many hours a week, but yeah. it's a lot. <laughs> how do you get ready for a recording session? Is that extra hard? Well, we've had many different methods. Some mm -hmm. of our producers in the past give us all 10 songs at one time and we have to learn all the music and then we just go in and like three days record it all. But our last two projects have been more one song on a, at a time and actually arranging it and performing it on the spot in the studio. Mm -hmm. So sometimes we haven't even had time, we haven't even practiced anything and we go in the studio and we record it. Mm -hmm. Really? I, do, I would say, very, wow. I would say now to one of our, the biggest preparations that we do for recording, especially vocals, is emotionally getting into it. Right. And that's one thing that our producers really stress, probably with the classical crossover type of style, mm -hmm. is high emotion. Mm -hmm. Not just technically getting all the licks and the runs, but they're really stressing to us the emotional, the emotional preparation in it and there are moments where in the in the studio literally I have to remind I have to almost tell myself think about something fun think about you know I don't even know things that I think are fun in life because I'm mm -hmm. about to cry and that's yeah. about when they're they catch the best uh -huh. things <laughs> that they want to record it's a no-no in recording I'm sure <laughs> yeah well, it's a little embarrassing yeah. <laughs> right. just one second no started. but that's that's when they get the most heart from her especially mm -hmm. I think um she can 
she can almost start crying over something lyric wise in the studio. That's why we, a lot of times we give her the sad lines yes. of songs. Every time we get <laughs> she to gets it. all the depressing we'll lines. We'll get the, the we'll get the the sad lyrics or something like I heard the bells on Christmas like, Day. There oh. <laughs> And yes. in despair, I bow my head, and they're like, give that to Addie, she'll sing that one. <laughs> <laughs> or like on Yuri's Me Up, When I Am Down, and Oh My Soul So Weird. Oh, yeah. He's like, hey, Addie, there you go. <laughs> well, I had a special request of your father. Okay. Mm -hmm. When I heard you sing in East Texas last May, one of the afternoon sessions, you started with, with uh, Be Still My Soul, or that oh, tune, right. Finlandia. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I have loved that song since I was a teenager. Oh wow! And I wanted sung at my not sung but played at my funeral because mm -hmm. it just there's something about it. The Holy Spirit listened that song for me. Mm -hmm. Yes. You are going to do it in our church, What are your future plans? You have any big things on the drawing board? You know that's a hard question mm -hmm. for us to answer because just like we said, it's never what we would expect to be doing right now. Mm -hmm. It's hard to say, you know, like the five-year plan that people yeah. ask us, because it's never anything that we charted yeah. out ourselves. So, yeah. um, as as just as the Lord has put it in our laps up to this point, we're ready to take on what He gives us. Um, we are so excited you're here in our church. We're so excited to be here. Uh, unfortunately, this will be uh, viewed probably a long time after you're here tonight. Right. <laughs> but I want our people to know that this is the new. CD. It's a Christmas CD. It has all my favorite stuff on it. And I may put this under my pillow. <laughs> thank you all very much. Thank I know you so need much. to go do a hundred things right now. So oh, thank you. I love you both. Thank you. Love you all too. three of you. <laughs> oh, so God bless you. So happy to be here. Thank you. You, know, you know, I had a little fun at my youngest child's expense a moment ago. But I got to thinking while y'all were watching the Photo Sisters, I think the very first feelings of gratitude that I had were for my dog too. Mm -hmm. I had a dog named Streak and I think if you'd asked me what I was grateful for that would probably be on top of the list. <laughs> There's a verse in the Bible that changed my life. 1 Thessalonians 5 18. Mm. It says, well that passage says, rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, giving thanks to God for all things. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Very personal. I made a decision based on reading that scripture one day, and I met my wife mm. about a month later. Mm. How, how do you thank God for the bad stuff? Mm. Is, that, is that hard to do? It's difficult for yeah. me. Yeah. We always think of Thanksgiving, you thank you for the blessings. Count your many blessings. Right. Right. It's not count your many troubles <laughs> or trials. <laughs> right. Yeah. I suppose if we did not have some challenges and some situations that seem negative, we wouldn't recognize the the great times. Yeah. Uh, I've had a few times in my life, and fortunately these have been very few, but there have been a few times in my life when I have um, been down emotionally and... Um, it was difficult for me to see the positive things in life and uh, really it one day it dawned on me that that people living living in our world is difficult let's face it tough world it's tough it's uh it's challenging there uh won't just sometimes when we think we just have it all put together, something comes along that kind of knocks the wind out of us. And there, there's always been, and I attribute this to God, bringing a person into my life that says something that really helps me focus on my, the positive things. And I, one day I decided, you know, I want to be that kind of person. Yeah. I want I want to be the kind of person that encourages people to see the very best in their life. Sure, there are always going to be negative things, or at least things that appear negative. Sometimes things that we think are negative turn out to be very positive. But uh, I, 
I've had people who have encouraged me, and one day I've decided I want to be an encourager. And a Barnabas. Yep, yep. And it, it really, it's amazing. It, it, it changed my life yeah. when I decided that. And, and I think that since I made that decision, I find that uh, God brings people across my path real often who are discouraged. Yeah. And they need to hear that. Let me tell you what God did for me right. when I was about yeah. Yeah. where you were. Yeah, I think uh, this. I read this article called "Practicing Gratitude" by Eric Johnson, mm -hmm. and he he talks about the kind of mental health that just being grateful mm -hmm. gives us. So, what do you got about that? I I, I was while um, Ray was talking, I was thinking about the story in the Bible when uh, Jesus healed the ten lepers. And oh, that's the Bible good. Says yeah, yeah. That only one came back. Yeah. Mm. And I, I love Jesus' response because Jesus said, did I not heal 10? <laughs> 10. <laughs> Which is a rhetorical because what do you do when the answer asks you a question? But that's a whole other sermon for another day. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great sermon in the scripture. I wish I'd have thought of that. <laughs> he's the answer. Where he are the nine? He said, where is the nine? Because when Jesus asks a question, he's not asking for a revelation. He's asking for uh -huh. confirmation because he already knows. So he said, where are the other people that I, I hear? Mm -hmm. and, and the question I pose to even you in the audience today is, are you a part of the nine or the one? Mm -hmm. When Jesus does something for us, do we get so happy with the healing that we leave and never come back, right? Come back to church, right? Come, come back to First Baptist, right? Shake uh, Ray Love hand for singing that song that ministered to you. Shake. Dr. Griffin Ham for minister to you. Do we ever come back and say thank you, right, for, for giving to, to God's house? Thank you, thank you, God, because you blessed me. And, and not be a people who just take a blessing and then we, we run, but never come back and tell God thank you. And I think it's so important, uh, even as Christians, to make sure we're more givers than takers, right? And, and, and being about really coming back and just saying thank you because if it meant nothing to Jesus for him to come back, he wouldn't have told him you have been made whole. Yeah. If it meant nothing, he would have said fine and let him go about his business. But it must have been something to Jesus for him to come back because he said, since you came back, now you've been made whole. Yeah. Hmm. Right? Which shows there's a difference between healing and whole, but that's a whole other sermon for another day. If you don't <laughs> preach that Sunday, I'm going to come over and haunt you. <laughs> right? That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. So, so if it means that much to Jesus. Yeah. Right? That for us to come back and say thank you. Well, the least thing he was doing was commending thankfulness and commending gratitude. Commending thankfulness. And we sometimes leave that, you know, and I also want to be grateful. Right, know? right. And so, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and another thing, the, the side B of that is, not only does it mean a lot to Jesus, it means a lot to us as humans. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when, 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 when I bless you, I'm not doing it for you to say thank you, but it'll be sure good if you say thank you. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and so that's why I try to make sure when someone does something for me, I try to make sure I say thank you. We go out to lunch, and uh, uh, I'm just bringing this up because this is my way of saying thank you. I always try to honor Dr. Griffin, and for the most part, I want to uh, my my thank you is making sure I take him to lunch. Right, that's a small thing for me, and Dr. Griffin says, "No, you're not paying. I'm going to pay." I mean, he. he he, re he really wants, he really don't want me to pay. But he don't, understand, he don't understand that that's my, that's, that's a small way I can say thank you. It helps me, it, it makes me feel so good just to be able to say thank you to, to, to him for, for all he's been to me, helped me, uh, just the advice I get. And so it's something very, very small, my new, but it's my way of coming back like the one from the nine and saying, hey, thank you, I just appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And so I think as, as people, as Christians, you know, we have to sometimes not only say it, but sometimes show uh, that we're thankful to God, but 
but also our family members, right? We should have to wait for a, a happy birthday or, or a holiday. Sometimes I tell my, my congregation, why don't you call when you get home from church and just tell a family member that raised you and you love them. They say, I don't want anything. I just want to tell you I love you and I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. yeah. In the church we first worked together in, Ray sang a, one, a lot of beautiful solos. I mean, He's There Waiting was the one I really fell in love with your voice and the way you sang it. But another one that I associate with you every time we sing it, and we still do sometimes, is How Can I Say Thanks. Mm -hmm. We're going to sing that Sunday, by the way. I love oh, that song. Up? Okay. Yeah. I love that song. Do you remember the words well enough? How can I say thanks for for the things you, you have, have done, done for, for me? me. That's mm. Thanksgiving. Right things there. so undeserved, mm. yet you give to prove your love, love for me. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Oh, so then you got that now, and you added that sermon. And <laughs> you don't have to study anymore. <laughs> that That's it. It's really good stuff. Thank really. you, sir. The Thank thankful you, Samaritan, you. like the good Samaritan. Yes. He's sometimes overshadowed by the good Samaritan. That's right. What do you think in America, with all our blessings, do you think our people generally, the population in general, is thankful? They don't. I don't. I, don't yes. think I, so. I think. Uh, uh, I, I think there are a lot of people who are. I agree. But generally, I think we're takers. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. We're, yeah. We love to take consumers. as long as we're take. taking everything. Yeah. Fine. We love to we're take. consumers. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Well, I think there's such advantage psychologically to to seeing the little things, whether it's a toothbrush or a raise you got at work or a new baby in the family. Yes. Uh, to really sincerely thank God. I, I'm guilty. Maybe you are too. But, I pray to God and I talk to him and I usually ask him for help other people right. da, 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 help me with this problem. But I don't sometimes do adoration and thanksgiving the way I should. So I think we've got some place to work on it. How does the church help people to show gratitude, to be grateful? It's I think, another I got all I got is hard questions. Today. I think I think one way the church can <laughs> is by doing outreach. And so uh, when we as a church do, do outreach what we're showing is we're thankful for what we have by blessing somebody else yeah right and so um the message when we're doing outreach is hey jesus loves you we love you and and we're showing that uh, we love you by by helping you in some kind of way shape or form right because we know we are blessed and so um i think by doing outreach that's a way to show thankfulness because that's an action and that's showing love and i think as as church you know, I, I really believe as far as the faith church, that's why we do so much outreach uh, because we have to show how much of Can I interrupt you just to ask you? Yes. You all did something magnificent not too long ago. You yeah. bought people gasoline. Gasoline. Mm. Went to the Anything gasoline. about gratitude in that story? Yeah, so we went uh, <laughs> went to uh, a quick trip um, there on Pleasant Run and 35, and we gave away uh ten dollar gas gas cards right but that we're supposed to only, yeah yeah we, we were supposed to only give uh 50 out we wind up uh giving 73 because get this as people started coming other people started coming and giving money to us to go uh -oh. give more gas cards mm -hmm. so we went there only with 50. We ended up giving 23 more because people started coming up and saying, hey, I want to help. How much are the gas cards? Oh, that's mm -hmm. great. I said, go, I inside and get, yeah. go inside and get five gas cards. Go inside. We ended up with 23. So we blessed 73 people with gas. And, and, and let me say, I have gotten testimony after testimony of, of people who have came and said, I don't know what I would have did without that $10. Oh, a guy came and said, I was trying to go get my son for the weekend, couldn't get him. He said, now I'm able to go get him. Oh, that's and, then, wonderful. and that was thankfulness. That was thankfulness. That, that was the point I wanted to yes. get to. Well, it looks like our time has run out yes. again. We're so glad that you tuned in because maybe something that was said will help you as you face Thanksgiving this year. Yes. Mm -hmm. I hope you know that in the theology of the world where God is the king, and he's the one who calls the shots, and he is absolutely sovereign. Yes. That means he doesn't have to explain himself to us. Mm. But that same God loves you. Yes, he does. So much, so just much. the way you are. Yes. You don't have to clean up your act yes. for him to love you. Yes. And he until we you. talk like this again, we hope you have a wonderful season of Thanksgiving and Christmas. Amen. Mm -hmm.